Check the description for the following discount codes. Before we get into the video, um, whenever I do a, a Quest video and I show my Quest, someone always asks me what headphones these are. Now I've done a video on, on what they are and how to install them uh, and where to get them from, but they're Marshall Major 3s. I'll put a link to the video where I demonstrate these and install them at the end cards to this video and in the description. Anyway, what we're here for today, oh, let me just turn my air conditioning fan down because that's a bit noisy. It's a really hot day here today in the UK, so gotta be done. Anyway, what we're here for today is the SSW update from Virtual Desktop from Gee Goaded. Now, he, um, he's always bang on the case with, with pushing the envelope here with wireless connectivity for PC VR streaming to our Quest, which is excellent to see. And a few of you have been waiting to see what I thought of this update. But first of all, at the time of recording this video, it's still in beta. So I'll show you how to get that if you're not already on the beta channel, because you'll need to. Um, by the time the video comes out, it may well be at its full release, in which case you can skip forward a little bit. But let me just show you what you need to do to get it up and running. So first of all, you need to get the Oculus app open on your mobile phone. And once you do that, you just click the search icon at the top, start typing virtual desktop, and it'll appear there at the top. Click on that, and then you'll see it there at the top of the list. Obviously, go ahead and select that. So here we are. Um, I've got the option to start it because I've already got it installed. You should have two. Scroll down until you see the version number here, 1.2.10.0. Click on that, and then you'll go through to this screen. In the top right-hand corner there, it says beta channel. Now, if yours says live channel, just click on the drop down there and change it to beta. Uh, and from that point, you can exit out of the Oculus app and then load it up on your Quest and there will be a virtual desktop update on the Quest. Now, once you've done the virtual desktop update on the Quest, load up <laughs> virtual desktop, obviously, and, um, and make sure it's connected to your PC. Although, it may not necessarily have to be connected to your PC. You may be able to go through these options anyway, I can't remember, but I'd just be connected. Anyway, once you've done that, go to the streaming tab on the left-hand side there, like I'm about to do here. And once you've done that, you'll see in the bottom left-hand corner, synchronous space warp. Disabled, automatic, or always enabled. So if you want to play around with this, you can flick it to always enabled, and then whatever refresh rate you choose here, whether it's 120, 80, 90, 72, 60, your PC will render at half that rate, but the screen on your Quest will refresh at that chosen rate. And that's basically all you need to do. You know, you can, you can leave it on automatic, which is really what it's designed for, to sort of fill in the gaps when your PC drops performance, or in my case, I actually leave it disabled, and I'll talk about why that is in a minute. But that's how you uh, install it. Uh, and I will also, sorry, one more thing you'll need to do before, before you load it up um, on the Quest is to get the beta version of the streaming app for the PC. I will put, that's from the Virtual Desktop Discord channel. So I'll put a link to the Discord channel in the description here. And you just need to pop in there uh, and follow the, the download link to get it down from there. Yeah, you can use the, the non-beta version of the streaming app, but um, I think Steam VR doesn't report correctly the refresh rates when you're messing around with, with things like that. So it's better to get the beta version. But yeah, the link is in the description to the Virtual Desktop Discord channel. Hop in there, get the latest version of beta version of the streamer app, um, and then fire it up on the Quest, do the update, connect, and you'll have those options available there, and it should all work okay. As I say, by the time this video comes out, it may not even be in beta anymore, and we may all just have it by default anyway, if we've all updated to the latest version of Virtual Desktop and the Streamer app. Gee going so fast at getting these updates out, it wouldn't surprise me, um, even though it's only literally been out a few days now. So, that's all done, that's all installed, that's how you have a play around with it. What are my thoughts? Well, it's a tricky one, because some people see this type of 
sort of frame guessing, where it guesses the next frame for you, as like a, a magic pill that solves performance issues. So that's fine, we can, we can run it at 120 on the Quest and render it at 60 FPS or 60 Hertz on the PC and have all the graphical glory turned up to maximum. That isn't really what it's for because whilst you, it certainly allows you to do that, the experience you get with SSW on or the Steam equivalent or the Oculus equivalent is nowhere near as smooth as what it would be if you were actually rendering at 120 hertz, for example, on the PC and displaying it at that on the Quest. Now, let me in fact put up the video from, from Guy where he's demonstrating um, the Oculus version against the virtual desktop version. And you can see here, the Oculus version is nowhere near as smooth. There's a lot more ghosting of that, that finger versus the virtual desktop version. But if you look at the virtual desktop version, there is still ghosting. And this is the problem. If you're playing a first person shooter, for example, and you're looking down the site, or looking, or just looking at the, the iron sights at the end of the gun, for example, you can visibly see ghosting as you pan from left to right. You know, just like an old school PC with a low refresh rate monitor, when you move the mouse around, you'd see a mouse tail behind it. It's that sort of effect. And to, in my opinion, it's horrible, and I would never want to choose to use it. On other things, you get a shimmering as well. Um, and again, it's because it's guessing based on an algorithm what the next frame should be rather than literally rendering each frame based on your movement at the exact time at which you do it. So you don't get that sharpness, that crispness as far as the, the feeling of ref refresh rate and response goes and also visibly when you're looking at it there's this ghosting uh, and sort of shimmering around the edges of things as well. So for me I would never ever choose to use it and also so like especially this is, this is more noticeable on the lower refresh rate. So if you actually choose 80 hertz or 72 hertz and render at half that, which is gonna be like super low, the, that ghosting is exaggerated even more. And also for those of us prone to motion sickness, which I am, it makes me wanna bring up my breakfast in a matter of minutes. It's just not usable at all. I know there are some of you out there who don't get motion sickness and I know um, people that play Microsoft Flight Simulator at 40 FPS in VR on like a Reverb G2 with everything turned up. I, I don't know how you can do it. I'm envious that you can because, you know, it gives you the ability to do so. But for me, anything less than 72 hertz and I start to feel motion sickness. So when I was testing this, I could set it at 120 hertz put the SSW on, meaning the PC was rendering at 60. And for me, that was the best experience. There was the least amount of ghosting and it took a little bit longer to start to feel motion sick. But, you know, the lower down you go, the worse it gets. And even at 120, rendering at 60, it's, it's unplayable for me. Not only from the motion sickness point of view, but just visually, it looks horrible. Um, and it doesn't feel anywhere near as responsive and sharp as what it should do. Really. This technology was developed to sort of make up for the odd frame drop if the PC performance is, is struggling a little bit. It isn't really designed to be on the whole time and be that magic performance pill, you know, that we can take and all of a sudden we can run everything, you know, really high visual fidelity, but only render it at half the the speed, it doesn't really work like that. I mean, obviously, go ahead and have a little play around, have a try, do what you want to do. And if you don't get motion sickness uh, and you're happy to have a slower response and a slightly sort of ghosted image and, and what have you, then by all means use it. But for me, it's a no, I can't use it because A, it makes me feel motion sick and B, I think it looks horrible. But um, it'd be nice you know, to see how these things develop over time, whether they do get a little better or not, everything always does, but right now for me, I can't use it, it will always stay disabled. And I will always turn my settings down so that my PC doesn't noticeably drop frames 
and so that it can hold, you know, maybe 90 hertz, uh, and I will play like that. Because that's sharp and responsive, the image is clear, there's no ghosting, there's no shimmering, uh, and there's no motion sickness. So for me, that's my opinion and my experiences on it. Let me know whether you're one of the lucky ones that can play at 120 rendering at 60 and feel good. And let me know your thoughts on the ghosting, whether it's something you can deal with or not. You know, whether it's worth the trade-off for having perhaps higher resolution textures and the better lighting effects on and whatever else there might be. But for me, there's my thoughts. As always, thank you very much for watching and take it easy.